Hey you guys, this is Raphael from ShallowRelics.com. Thank you guys for all your support. I really do appreciate it. My family appreciates it. And I'm thankful to say that there have been lots of new collectors. I've had a lot of people that because of these videos have said, I decided to start collecting this because I've started realizing history is a cool thing and it's a great thing to remember and to appreciate and to learn from. You remember a couple of videos ago, I told you I had some big news and I've been dying to tell you guys, but I had to be sure that everything was in line before I could. I got the news last week. I went up to visit my buddy Hank Williams Jr. and we hung out for a little while and he has decided that he's going to let me sell his collection of Civil War cannon. Uh, uh, not all at once, but a little bit as long. And we're going to start off with one of them that's just a Beautiful gun. Check this out. How cool is that? It's an original bronze, which they make cannon in iron and bronze. Bronze is always more desirable because even during the time it was more expensive to make generally better quality and most of the time like this, they look pretty. This one was made in 1839. It's made by the Cyrus Alger Company in Boston. And the way a cannon is made, you have the body of the cannon and you have the knobs on each side. Those are called the trunnions. And on the right trunnion, you have the marking that's clear as a bell. It's Cyrus Alger and Company of Boston like that. And on the other trunnion, the left-hand side, we have the 1839 production date. Good early date. And if you ever go through a lot of the park service uh the national parks, a lot of them have these early date guns because that's what they went to war with because that's what they had. And they were still firing smooth bore ammunition because this is a smooth bore cannon. And if you go through Shiloh, several of those Confederate positions, they have smooth bore six pound uh, guns just like this. So a lot of those Southern soldiers were fighting with these. It actually put them at a disadvantage though because it is a smoothbore gun. At the same time, a lot of the Union soldiers, uh, Union artillery had the rifled cannon, which was a lot more accurate. The shells would go further. And so it usually was a big advantage to the Union artillerymen. Not at shallow because it was so thick with trees and that it took away that advantage from firing from so far because most of it was more up close and personal. This gun is just beautiful. It's got, it's made of bronze. It's got just a beautiful look all over on the, the a couple of other things about these guns. The knob on the backside of it is known as a cascabel. And people often say, well, what is that for? It's for a couple of things. The, one of the things that that's for is if for some reason you had to put the cannon back on the carriage, which is the wooden part with the wheels, you had to have something to pick the cannon up with. And they would tie the rope around that cascabel, raise it up, and slide the ca carriage underneath it, drop it back down. So it was very functional for that. Right by the cascabel, on the flat uh, of the back, which is called a breech face, it has 693. Guess what 693 is? That's how heavy this cannon is. Just the barrel, the copper in the barrel weighs 693 pounds. It's a lot. One thing that's cool about this gun is that it doesn't have the US up on top of the barrel. Why does it not have that? Because not all of the cannons of the time went straight to the government, to the central government. Some of them went to states and some of them would have went to private militias. This one was, would have been one of the ones that went to one of those private militias. It's beautiful. If you notice, it's on a really pretty carriage. This carriage was made by steam uh, cannon. They make a great carriage. Uh, a lot of good carriage makers out there. This one's pretty. It's all there. Uh, displays really well. As for the cannon itself, this one was one, it came from the collection of Val Forger who owned Navy Arms, the company that made all the reproductions, and, but he also had an amazing collection. 
Mr. Forger had Cannon as well as he collected Lamatt revolvers. Had a huge collection of those, even wrote a book on those revolvers. Several years ago, this gun came up for auction and uh, Tim Prince and I helped Hank Jr. get it. And it's been in his uh, collection ever since the day we got it. We got it and a, another cannon out of the same sale. And I'm trying to call Hank and I'm like, I can't wait to tell him because we got it. And most of the time they bring just ridiculous money. I've seen these bring way over what we're asking for this one. Uh, but I, he's in Montana and he's out on the on the uh, farm out there and I can't get through to him until he gets up on top of a mountain and I'm like, we got it, we got it. And it would break up and he called back and he said, ah. And so he was as excited as we were because it's a great gun. And it's one that has been in his collection ever since. I remember I went up right after it got delivered and it was just so much prettier than it was in the pictures. These guns that we're gonna be selling are all out of his collection. They come straight out of his gun room. When you see the pictures of this gun like this, that's in his relic room. You won't be able to see him if you buy it, but he has been good enough to write a letter on his stationery for each cannon. It has the description, it has the markings, and it has his signature. And so you get that to keep with it. It's, and it's a great gun. All of them are great guns. I helped him get several of them. I think all of them, but one, maybe two. And they're ones, if I had hit the lottery, I'd have kept them myself, including this one. So we're going to have some great things coming. I've bought multiple collections in the past month, plus these. It's going to be some wonderful things. There's only a limited number of them. Uh, and it's, it's one that's got everything you could hope for on the bells and whistles. Good early day, clear markings, pretty carriage. It's ready to be enjoyed. I never recommend shooting them, but a lot of people do. I hope that you guys are doing okay. I hope that uh, kindness, I almost didn't mention my kindness. When I was talking with him, I told him how many people have been sending him good thoughts and well wishes because so many of y'all have reached out after the passing of Katie and she was a wonderful girl. His daughter, in case you hadn't heard, she passed in a car wreck. Uh, I've had so many people reach out and, and he said to tell you guys, thank you uh, for caring uh, that it's, it's something, there's just not words when something like that happens, but it's nice to know that people cares. And he said to tell you guys, thank you. Uh, He's doing a lot better. That's the kind of thing you never get over. Uh, after Lori died, I had a blackjack dealer in Tunica, Mississippi that told me a phrase that rings in my bell, rings in my head every time I hear that. Uh, I had spilled my heart out and she said, honey, you never get over it, but you learn to live with it. And that's just what happens when somebody passes. But thank you guys for caring. Uh, thank you for always your encouragement because it's helped me a lot. I mean, it has helped me a lot. I am very, very thankful. I've had people uh, send me little notes saying they like these videos that I don't even know. Um, I'm, I'm just thankful somebody's getting something out of them. And they, uh, but more importantly, they've said thank you for the encouragement in a crappy time in our history. And it is a crappy time in our history, but hopefully it's gonna get better. But it's only gonna get better if we all try harder to make things better. And I'm gonna try. I just hope you guys know that how much uh, I appreciate you. I love y'all and I'll catch you next time.